Looking for ideas for your next group outing? Save on tickets when you bring a group of 10 or more with prices starting as low as $17 per ticket. Plus, enjoy group benefits including recognition on the scoreboard, special pricing on Gall's hats and scarves, and increased priority for premium games. Visit sandiegogalls.com slash groups to learn more. On Saturday, January 15th, the Gauls hosted their first ever Marvel Superhero Night. The team wore Spider-Man themed warm-up jerseys that were autographed and auctioned off that night with all the proceeds benefiting the San Diego Gauls Foundation. In addition, the first 8,000 fans received a free Gulliver Superhero poster. Before the game, we asked the players who their favorite Marvel superheroes are. Marvel superhero. Um, I go Iron Man. All right, my favorite superhero, Captain America. Spider-Man. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be Tony Stark for sure. Iron Man. Spider-Man. Oh, Iron Man. Oh man. Um, Thor. Iron Man is the greatest. Like it's so sick. Yeah. yeah. Spider-Man is pretty nice. Being in like a teenager, it's pretty sick. Actually, no, Iron Man, Captain America, Winter Soldier, probably uh, Spider-Man, uh, Thor, through his hair. Oh, you gotta go with Spider-Man. And now, part two of my interview with defenseman Brogan Rafferty. You know, to go back to your early playing days, what was the decision to go to Quinnipiac? First, attend the school, and also you wanted to be a part of the hockey program as well, too. Yeah, I, I would say it'd probably be the other way around. <laughs> I, I went there for hockey and so happened to get a great education as well. I really just fit in well with that coaching staff and all the players there and, and look back on my time at Quinnipiac with nothing but fond memories and, and great friends for life. Now you were undrafted and you make your way to the pro level anyways. How did that opportunity come about for you? My first year at Quinnipiac, I had a really good start to the year. I came in a little bit early and started training with the strength coach there, who's uh, world class. And the coaching staff and getting comfortable, had a great start to my freshman year and really started gaining pro attention. Then when the time came to sign, I felt ready and so did uh, my coaches at Quinnipiac and my parents and everything and um, had a list of teams that were interested and decided to sign with Vancouver and kick off my uh, pro career and you did too with the bang yeah and you went right to the nhl what do you remember about your first nhl game i love hearing these stories i i, <laughs> I don't remember much yeah. i think that'll be a common theme if you ask people how what do you think about your first nhl game i don't remember much uh, it was in nashville um very nervous obviously didn't sleep much the night before it was kind of a crazy week uh, our season ended at quinnipiac we were out of the playoffs and you know, the next day I was on a plane out to Vancouver. So um, very crazy, but very, very surreal for me to, to be in that environment at the time of my life. The next year you get settled in the American Hockey League and you get to play a full pro season. And you stepped on the scene without missing a beat either. You were a part of the AHL All-Rookie Team, the All-Star Game, the second AHL All-Star Team. With all those accolades, when you look back at that year, what, what do you remember most and, and how did you feel during the course of that season? I just felt very comfortable going into Utica that year. Obviously, I played those two NHL games with Vancouver um, that spring. It gave me a lot of confidence. So I hit the ground running, had a really good training camp with Vancouver, um, started the year in Utica and finished in Utica. I was just very comfortable and, and uh, I kind of had a little chip on my shoulder, not to hold anything back. Don't be tentative, just kind of attack it head on and, and play your best every night if you can. The very next year, obviously after COVID hits, we have the taxi squad. And I talked to Buddy Robinson about this in a previous episode. He had nine games, you had one game. You were the casualty of the taxi squad. Too good for the American Hockey League, but you're on an NHL roster. How did you handle that adversity? It was tough, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I, I would say, you know, physically you go through the bag skates and, and um, the taxi squad skates that you do with the low, the low numbers and you get a lot of reps and so you're tired, but mentally it's the hardest part. And I'm very grateful I had my wife out there with me. She picked me up a lot uh, when I had my down days, but um, you know, at the end of the day, you're, you're, playing, you're getting paid to play a game. And that's what I try to tell myself. 
Um, you know, other people have it worse and just try to enjoy every day and come to the rink with a positive attitude and, and try to get better and hopefully crack the lineup. And then you go to this year where you're with our organization now. So what was the anticipation coming to the Ducks organization and what, what drew you to sign with Anaheim? I heard nothing but good things about the staff here, to be honest. Um, I reached out to other people who have played here in the past and who also play here and um, they have nothing but good things to say. Southern California is beautiful, but um, at the end of the day, you have to go where you're going to be happy and where you're going to play. And that's what I felt most comfortable coming here was the staff was great. The opportunity was obviously there and uh, it was more of a fresh start for me. What are your thoughts about the city of San Diego now that you're settled in here and you've had some time to experience it? I love it. <laughs> I, I, I'm a very proud Chicagoan, but San Diego, that's up there on my list of, of uh, best cities to play, best cities to live. I was, I think we had an off day last week and I went golfing with some of the guys and I'm driving around on the golf cart in December and I'm looking around like, wow, I'm so blessed to play here and, and, and uh, do this for a living. That'll do it for this show. Join us next time as we introduce you to assistant coach Max Talbot. Thanks for watching and we'll leave you with the best moments from the first half of the season. A season opener two years in the making. Time to welcome fans back into the arena. It's back to Rafferty. Near circle, Perot shoots, scores! Jacob Perot puts the goals on the board, a slap shot. Larson adds another shot stop. Tracy wrap around, scores! In. They got numbers. Tracy shoots and a save. Rebound. Marlow scores. Garrett outlet up to Tracy. Partial break. Cuts in. Shoots. Scores. Listen to America's finest fans. Rafferty, nice move. He'll get some space. Carry it in. Scores. Rogan Rafferty. Unbelievable. America's finest. The Gulls debuted their much-anticipated third jersey that was five years you know in the making the and pays ready, homage ready. to hockey history in San Diego. You know the crowd is ready. And that Tracy cuts towards the slot, shoots, scores! Right off the draw, Rafferty scores! Carry at the center, he'll charge to the empty net, scores! Robinson with a fist you know bump, seals four consecutive victories against you know the Barracuda. He'll pick it up in center, move in, stick handle, shoot, score! Oh, let's one loose here, rebound in front, they score! Bull Groove finds the loose change in front and puts it home. Over the line for Groove, he shoots, score! Over there! And a fan favorite returns to San Diego. And the second year forward, Bo Groove delivers the Teddy Bear goal. See you in the second half of the season.